What's going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here with a video here today bringing guys a fun Photoshop tutorial how to create your very cool one minute banner design series video mosaic glass whatever the title says in this video here today. Regardless you guys know what the one minute banner design series is we just try to take cool effects things that we don't really normally use and try to make something cool out of it. I think this is really really cool. It has a really cool marble glass like mosaic like basically what I said at the beginning um kind of feel to it I think it's really fun let's just get right into it because it's not that hard whatsoever um this I think the beginning part is gonna be a little bit tedious but that that's the whole point it's gonna be really quick and easy to do once you guys get a hang of it and uh yeah let's, of course you can set five likes on the video because see down below which will also be the PSD that you guys see here today so if you guys like the video please sure to like it you can get the PSD make sure you subscribe if you guys haven't already um that's it let's just let's jump into it let's do it all right guys going this is going right here right now and it's also not like eight hours in the future from my intro. It's totally not 3 a.m. It's totally 3 a.m. So basically, the recording last time was a little bit too, it was a little bit ridiculous. So we're gonna redo it and uh, let's do it right now. So it's actually gonna be even easier the second time around, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys firstly is the actual hex tones, right? So I have three different colors that I'm working with in today's video, which one happens to be this orange, one is this purple pink, um, it's pink, right? And then we have another back color which is gonna be like a nice dark blue. Uh, be my guest to change your colors around, but I, what I would recommend is your background color should be around this kind of hex tone. You can kind of make it this hex tone firstly, and then move the actual hue bar to get a different color. Um, that's just my like idea, because I feel like the background does actually matter quite a lot. So, once you guys have your colors all good to go, I'm going to have mine in the top left corner. I'm going to go ahead and make sure, of course, my background color is this blue. And then I'm going to make a new layer, just like so. And we're going to start off with basically making five different triangles and very randomly, very sparsely, don't really have to worry about it too much, but just make five random triangles so I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> there we go, right? We have five triangles, pretty good, very simple, right? Like I'm gonna do now is, of course, what I wanna do is I'm gonna set up my brush. So my brush settings have to be as followed. Three size, 100 hardness, and you're good to go, right? So this reason is because, also if your disappears, all you have to do is just hold control, click someone on the canvas again, it'll reappear. But then I'm gonna right click, stroke path, drop down, use the brush settings, press OK. And as you can see, it'll take the foreground color that you guys have. So my foreground color is currently pink. So my color of my actual strokes should be pink. If I right click, delete this path, you'll see we have nice little pink little triangles here and we're good to go. So I like these. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a new layer. Now this new layer, I'm gonna use the actual background color again, right? But I'm gonna make it a little more darker, okay? So I'm gonna take the actual circle here and drag it down just a little bit and then press OK. Then we're gonna make our brush size again a bit bigger and of course give ourselves a 0% hardness this time. And if you guys want another quick little shortcut how you bring up this little circle and this kind of red, if you guys hold Alt on your keyboard and move your mouse left and right, it'll make your diameter bigger and smaller and then up and down is how you actually change your hardness, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and get myself very quickly or very sparsely, I wanna use like the word sparsely or random very a lot because like you're just gonna do it a lot, right? Kind of click around just like this. Right, we're kind of almost adding like a bit of a shadow or a fog around it. And you can be a little bit loose with it. If you want to go back with a eraser and kind of erase different spots, be my guest. I'm just going to say something like this. I mean, it's covering it a little bit more than I want to. If I, if I want to load the opacity a little bit, I could. Just a little bit, like 93. Okay, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. And these little darker shadows are gonna matter a lot when you actually go ahead and put it in the color correction, I promise you. But right now, having this like the little kind of like faded um, triangles in the background is a good a good look, okay? So secondly, we're gonna go ahead and make another new layer and take our pen tool and just basically do another random triangles just once again. Okay, cool. I'm gonna stop for a second. I actually do what I actually did in the actual, uh, that's a lot of actuallys in one sentence. Um, what I ended up doing was I went ahead and made a little bit of the 3D kind of triangle. So for some of them, I kind of went in, right? Kind of put on the tip of that one, go all the way down to this line here. I'm like, there we go. Let's go a little bit further down. Why am I not going down? There we go. Just like so, kind of put it right on the same line, go around and connect it again. Makes it almost like a kind of like a, tr uh, a 3D kind of um, triangle going on here. So I'll do it one more time for this one right here. And for me, I just like how it looked in my original uh, video tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do it again because it definitely works, right? So once you have this, we're gonna go ahead and change the color again to this other color, which is orange, right? On our new layer, right click. Uh, oops, before we do that, change our brush settings. Three, 100, press enter. Pen tool, right click, stroke path, and also you're gonna get the stroke path with your pen tool selected, right? Drop down, use brush, press okay, right click, deselect or delete, and then I have more kind of uh, plexus kind of like uh, triangles going on here, and this is a good look. So what I wanna end up doing now 
is we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and like make a new layer just like so then we're gonna go ahead and just add a few kind of like random triangles but with kind of like shading of color so we're gonna do that is we're gonna find little triangle spots like right here okay take this make a nice little triangle here now you can just right click make selection then press ok then of course make sure you guys are on a new layer i am already but i'm gonna take a pink this time again right take a nice zero hardness brush kind of give myself a very quick little shading around a different a little different spot so i'm gonna do it again over here right and then i'll kind of speed up the rest of it right do it like this you even have to make it you can make it random as well i'll even put one in here as well because i like it in there just like this boom make selection press ok and then once again make yourself a nice little kind of faded kind of color in here if you want to mix it up maybe you want to have this one over here be orange be my guess let's just see what it looks like right i actually haven't done this yet but why not can i make it orange right i'll put a few more in and also maybe have some around the actual canvas that's actually not inside of a triangle but maybe like loosely and kind of around so i'm just gonna do that right now Okay, so this doesn't look bad at all for me. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hide my hex code really quick. So uh, I kind of just put them around randomly, very randomly. So I'm gonna end up doing is a really cool little shortcut is Control, Alt, Shift, and E. When you press all of those at the same time, it actually makes you guys a new layer. It's almost like actually combining, or it's almost like doing this, right? Click your first layer, hold Shift, click your last layer, press Control J to make a duplicate, Control E to merge it together. And so it's doing that entire process by just pressing Control alt shift and e it'll put basically put a new layer just like so with all the stuff that of course has it below it and so like that just like this right we're good to go so i'm gonna end up doing is with this i'm gonna take my blend mode now change it from normal to i believe it should be lighten okay now with lighten i'm gonna go ahead and just make a bigger kind of uh kind of make this a little more bigger control t and on oh my english is hard sometimes bro it's also 330 we got to bring it in okay so we're gonna go ahead and press control t for transform it and make it a little more bigger just like so. Now with this, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a layer mask. Now with layer mask, of course, when you guys use your brush, black erases, white fills in. So I can just take my black layer mask here when my layer mask is selected, change my color to black, and just erase a little bit around these little areas, right? And be kind of fun and loose with it. I kind of like how that looks. Kind of like how that looks. That looked pretty freaking cool in there. So I'm gonna leave that in there, okay? So like this is pretty cool and pretty good. So the last thing I'm gonna end up doing for this little portion here is making a new layer. Uh, new layer. Okay, now I'm gonna take a rectangle marquee tool and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like bring in a very simple kind of like, very kind of thin kind of line here. And what we're basically gonna be doing is making a quick uh, flare. If you wanna go on Google, type in flare, PNG, you probably get a flare as well. But I'm just gonna make one really quickly for you guys just to see how it is. I'm gonna press Alt backspace because I've got quick filling in the uh, foreground color, okay? Just like so, I'm gonna go ahead and just click, double click over here. Bring my layer, oops, my layer size over here on the other screen. Okay, take this, I'm gonna go ahead and use Outer Glow, and I'm gonna change this color to the orange that we have here. Now the saw spread is on 15, that's okay. I'm like losing my voice as I'm doing this. Um, <clears throat> size is on like 70, that is okay as well. What I'm gonna end up doing is just leaving it as like this, then I'll press okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize this. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna convert it to a smart object, get rid of the layers. Uh, and then I'm gonna rasterize it now, right? There we go, we got something like this. Now, if you guys want to, if your line is still a little bit too visible, like mine is right here in the corners, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm gonna blur this about 5.6, I like that, right? Let me have a little, simple little flare. It's very, very easy, very simple, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flare and put this around my banner around here, okay? If you wanna erase the edges a little bit, you definitely can if you wanna like, make it a little more skinnier, Right, you can definitely do something like that. But I'm gonna leave it just like this for now because it's not gonna matter, matter too much. What I'm gonna end up doing now is pressing Control J on my keyboard to make a duplicate, right? Then I'm gonna take my blender from normal to linear dodge add for one of these, right? Then I can go in here and then make it a little more, erase it. I'm taking my eraser, by the way, right? And erasing these edges, right? So I'm gonna have a little bit of a glow on the inside here because it's on linear dodge add above the original flare. Then I can make it look a little more cooler, right? So I'm gonna take the duplicate of the actual original again Make it a little more smaller, put it over here. I'm gonna just do it a few times, right? Make a duplicate of this one again, Control J. Linear dodge, add, erase it, make it look cool, give a nice little glow to it. We're gonna do that a few times. Okay. 
All right, cool. So I actually ended up putting the flares in a few different spots. It looks pretty good. If I want to have one over here, I probably would over here, but it's not going to matter too much like I said before. What I'm going to end up doing now is the same exact combination of keys, which is Control, Alt, Shift, and E on that first top layer. Right, It puts everything I have in that one single layer once again. But with this layer, I'm going to go ahead and right-click this and use Convert to Smart Objects. Now I'm going to go to Filter, uh, Camera Raw Filter. This is Color Correction, right? And what I'm going to end up doing is when this opens, anytime now, Please just open. There you go. Okay. So what I'm going to end up doing is move my highlights a little bit up. I'm going to put my shadows either uh, up or down. I'm going to say like, I'll put it down for now, but my uh, my blacks are definitely going to be going down a lot, right? And you can start seeing like what the background is doing. The darker spots that are right here is because what we did originally is having that uh, other shadow, the darker color of our background. And we put it, like, that was like a second thing we did, right? We have the, the strokes firstly, then we put another layer, have this nice little dark shadow casting fog like stuff over the uh the actual stroke and that's what's kind of happening right here and that's why it's looking really cool and kind of dynamic um because we did that originally right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put my whites put this up a little bit take my clarity put it about 15 right and then i'm gonna take also my third tab right here which is details take my sharpen put it to 10 right we're just making everything nice and clean and sharp now if you guys want to in your fourth tab which is hue saturation luminance adjustments you can take your hue and let's say you want to change your purple be my guest to change your purple around like this whatever like that that might be cool you take your oranges make it a different color you might find a different color skin that you didn't have before uh but you might like it originally or you might like this version better right but i don't kind of like this so i'm gonna go ahead and go to default here but for me as well if i want to i would definitely just uh, suggest you guys to use temperature and tint as well i'm not going to but again it's like a color correction thing you want to have some cool oranges in there pinks in there, want to see more primary green, whatever you want to end up doing, be my guest, but I'm going to once again, keep it on the original zero, zero. And uh, once I have my all highlights and stuff set already, right, you can see the before and after, right? It looks pretty freaking cool. Press okay, right? Now we have this in here. Now the fun part starts, right? What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and press file, save as, okay, now I'm in the right document. I don't want you guys to see, I'm not trying to get, I'm not going to get in trouble, bro. It's NDA. That stuff matters, and I really, my camera, bro, why do I care so much? Anyway, right, so what I'm going to do is now go to File, Save As, so you guys can see all my stuff, right? But I'm just going to call this OK, because I'm just, I already have it there. I'm going to press OK, press Yes, and what we're going to end up doing is, on the new layer, we're going to do another new layer again, so Control, Alt, Shift, E. What I mean by new layer is meaning the combined layer kind of thing we did before, right? When we have that new layer kind of set right here, we're going to go to uh, Filter, Distort, Displace, and we're going to change our hue, uh, our horizontal scale and our vertical scale to 25, just like so. Stretch to uh, stretch to fit and then repeat uh, edge uh, pixels. Press OK. And we're going to basically take our PSD that we had. We just saved just now, which is OK for now. Right. We press open and you'll see it makes it automatically look really cool and techy and fun and very weird and distorted. This right here for me is a super dope scheme just on its own. Even before you did this. It's super, super freaking cool to me. So I end up doing one more time again, the simple uh, key combination, control, alt, shift, E, right? We have a new layer just again, like put with all the layers in it, right? We're going to go to filter, uh, distort, displace, or if you guys want to, you can just go to filter and the first one here, or you just press alt, control, F to quickly do the displacement again with the same as that PSD, which I'm going to do that. So I'm going to press that just one like that. There we go. You can see you just kind of make it uh, almost three displacements now. What we're going to do is change our blend mode from normal to, I believe it's dark in color, just like so. You can see it's looking really weird and kind of mystical and kind of, it has a weird kind of vibe to it. But if you press Control T to uh, free transform, make it a little bit bigger, then you move it around a little bit, you can start seeing some really cool fractal kind of like things coming out. But if you just want to leave it like this, you say this looks pretty cool, whatever. What I'm going to do is use a layer mask. So we're going to click layer mask. We're going to take a black brush. A pretty good size brush and just click around a few spots and you're gonna find like little beautiful kind of like other things you did before kind of popping out right I, I love I freaking love how this looks this is a different one by the way this is this is like completely random once again the amount of times you do it of course is gonna be different every outcome right so that's the coolest part about this but for me this is freaking amazing so I'm gonna go ahead and just press a minute right make this white I believe the font that I used was monument not unisan so I'm gonna use monument ultra bold minute then you have your subtext in the bottom of it banner boom make it smaller offset a little bit right or make it even a different font let's use uh a rame nah, whatever i i use a rame so much that it just looks ugly to me at this point right 
do something like that. Boom. And you get your very quick and simple kind of banner. It's like, it is super quick. It honestly, this would take me like two seconds to do for me. Just make random, literally random triangles and use displacement when you guys save your PSDs. I just think this style is very, very cool, very different, and just overall like a very just it's it's dope. If you guys don't like it, I must there's must be something wrong with me, but I think it's super sick. Regardless, guys, of course, as you guys know, 275 likes on the video because a secret down below, which will be the piece you guys see here today. And uh, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. It's been a little bit since I did the one minute banner design series. I unfortunately had to re-record it, but at what time is it? Eh, it's okay, it's 3.30. We'll render it out. My voice is getting lost. Um, I love you guys so very much, but I'll talk to you guys later. Sex with HQ out. So now to get a key smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, I'm gonna go render this out and cry and post it in like six hours. <laughs> See you in a bit.